Thank you so much, Kat. Rather an exciting event taking place in the Free State at the moment. The Stars of Sandstone Locomotive Festival. And uh, I mean, these days, if you are a vehicle lover, you're probably th impressed by things like, you know, speed, comfort, and the sleek design as well. But it wasn't always like that. Now, since the invention of the wheel, that sparked an exciting process of engineering that gave us an array of wonderful vehicles. You know, vehicles that ran on steam, grease, even horsepower. And Tenji got to experience some of them at the Sandstone, or the Stars at Sandstone Locomotive Festival in the Free State. It's up until this Sunday the 9th of April so if you're in the area best you check it out. Engineering has forever changed the world's landscape and the way that you and I live our lives, especially when it comes to traveling. Now, while it seems things change so quickly we can barely remember how they used to be, there's a fantastic place that pays tribute to the old engines and machines that helped build the world as we know it today. The Sandstone Heritage Trust is a farm with a unique museum. Trains and rail engines of yesteryear are fully functional and can be enjoyed on the farm which is run by Wilfred Mole. We got a call from Transnet in those days, Spornet actually, to say they were closing their museum in Midmine, Natal. They had working locomotives on a small track and various other things and they needed a place in a hurry to store these things. So we said, well, we've got plenty of space, feel free. So they, they brought them here and was still had a dilemma because I now had a scrapyard. Fortunately, one of the fitters in our main workshop said, I used to work on the gold mines and I know how these things operate. Can I have a go at getting an steam engine in operation? I said, feel free. And to my astonishment, a couple of weeks later, he called me and there was an engine going up and down on a little piece of line, about 100 meters long, which he'd put together. And it was like a bug, really, that bites you and you say, that's amazing, um, let's extend it. And we just kept adding and adding to the railway and that motivated us to then repair the other locos from Midmar, which we did. A classic coal power train now choo-choos through the picturesque savannah on the edge of the Lesotho border. And it's a mechanical work of art. This particular locomotive behind me is a cockerel-built Garrett, built in Belgium in 1936. It was brought over to South Africa by the English for work moving timber and sugarcane primarily. I believe it worked up until about the mid-60s, at which point it was left derelict to rust away. Um, luckily, it got saved here by the Sandstone Trust, and they have restored it to full work in order, and now we all come here and enjoy it along with its brothers and sisters. If you're a lover of that 4x4 all-purpose power vehicle, then you have this little machine to thank. It's basically the great-great-grandfather of what we now know as the Bucky. This vehicle is very interesting because it really was the forerunner of the Bucky as we know it. They called this the farmer's buggy because in those days, uh, horse-drawn vehicles were called buggies. So they said, well, if we call it a buggy, they're not we're talking about it. It was very well thought through. We always joke to people and we say, Monday to Friday, normal farming work, over the weekend, relax, take the kids for a picnic, and on Sunday morning, take Granny to church. So it was a very, very versatile vehicle and highly successful. And in some ways, it, it could do all the things in 1907, 110 years ago, that they can do with a double cab today. Yet another engineering gem housed on the farm is this plane, whose bold exterior alludes to its very special purpose. So the yellow and black paint on this plane really caught my eye, but I'm guessing there's a specific reason why it's painted in those colours. Yes, this aircraft used to be a target tug. Basically what it did was it was towing a target on a long cable of approximately a kilometre, uh, towing a banner, and then it would fly past an anti-aircraft battery, and the uh, anti-aircraft battery would shoot at the uh, banner. And the reason for the bright colours is so that they don't shoot at the actual aircraft towing the banner. So from 1941 to 1995, this was an operating plane? Yes, it was the Abanisha training aircraft of the South African Air Force. Amazing. Oh, it is really cool in here. You know, being so up close and personal with a certified piece of heritage is not an experience that comes by easily. And it's not only about knowledge and history, there is also a little bit of thrill. Hold on, Captain, I'm going to fly this thing. Okay, not just yet. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Uh. From engine power to oxen power, the farm also boasts a beautiful ox wagon, transporting visitors to a bygone era. Now we know that engineering and technology has really helped streamline the modern engine, but it's quite something to go back to a much more basic form of transportation in the form of this ox wagon. Now in the past, this used to transport families upon families across the South African terrain. It's not 
much by way of speed, but the views are exceptional. Looking at the innovation that changed transport in the past, where will today's great discoveries take us on the journey into the future?